Hey, this is Brett the Hitman Hart, and you're listening to the Smack Raw Podcast. Welcome everyone to the Smack Raw Podcast, Extreme Rules Predictions, or the horror show at Extreme Rules Predictions. I'm your host, SES Vince. I got my main man, Aaron Real Petty, Mr. 8984 himself. How's it going, my man? No good, bro. So would you? Uh, not much, man. Just chilling. Getting, uh, obviously, this is a very busy week for us. We have this predictions episode we just had raw this uh this morning drop and we also have nxt aw smackdown uh we have slime anniversary to cover this uh, this saturday extreme rules this sunday and unpopular wrestling opinions which has become one of my favorite shows on on the entire podcast uh busy busy week for the smack Rob podcast if you love our content go ahead and check us out on youtube.com slash smack Rob pod or go ahead and check us out wherever you consume all your audio podcasts we're basically everywhere you can find it using our link tree slash smack Rob pod so go ahead and check that out for sure um but yeah man uh how are you feeling about extreme roles man are you excited uh man or just like not looking forward to it at all no i'm, I'm somewhere in the middle of man excited some of the matches i am looking forward to but for the most part i mean like, it's a summer pay-per-view before SummerSlam, so yeah and no no crowds and stuff too so it's just like all these pay-per-views are like they are what they are yeah for the, for the most part it really does feel like a b-level pay-per-view and that's no knock on the card because there are some interesting matches in here uh the first one we're going to talk about apollo cruz versus mvp for the united states championship and it's kind of weird because, like, the last two weeks, MVP has been running around with his own, like, United States championship. I think that's going to be the championship going forward. Uh, I saw Kyle make a joke and, like, outline that it looks like it has a dick in the middle of the new title. So <laughs> ever since he pointed that out, I can't stop not picturing it. Uh, so I, I, I prefer the old title now. <laughs> I, I like the new one. I mean, I, I at first I was like, uh... But actually, like once the pics of it actually came out, like up close and shit, like right. I'm here. I'm here for it. For sure, for sure. Uh, personally, I don't. I don't mind it. That's. It's just I keep looking at the center plate, and I just now picture the dick, the dick imprint all the entire time. So, that's uh, that's all Kyle's fault. We can blame him for that. And if you guys <laughs> see it going forward, you can blame me, I guess. But that's on him as well. Overall, I like the build to this. Uh, MVP has been trying to like get uh, Paulo Cruz to join his little like faction of people he's turned them down now this became personal he's been targeting cedric alexander the last two weeks as well so very interesting stuff to, to see what happens with the mvp stuff do you actually think mvp is gonna be the official united states champion after extreme rules i wasn't i mean going leading into it no but after like the last couple rolls like i don't now i'm like on the fence about it for real, yeah, because like the way they've been booking Lashley and and MVP together, it almost yeah. makes more sense for him to get the title and Apollo Cruz to win the brand new one off of him down the line. So yeah. I, I I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna throw my prediction out there. I'm gonna say MVP gets the title here, even though he's been walking around with a U.S. title the last two weeks. I think he's gonna be a, the official United States champion come this Sunday. Uh, I'm I'm still gonna pick Apollo Cruz, but I I think that MVP is gonna end up with the belt and then build his stable around that. I mean that's smart. I mean it's like Jericho s yeah put all these guys around you help you keep it. Yeah, for sure. Very uh, very strong possibility as well. Uh, also next up on the SmackDown side, uh, it's a feud that we've seen in the past and it's been simmering. And it's had some low points, some high points. Jeff Hardy versus Sheamus in a bar fight match. I get that they're doing all these stipulation-based matches because it is Extreme Rules. Some yeah. of these are, like, not in the ring because of the whole pandemic going on. So I like that they're getting creative. Um, haven't really kept up with SmackDown last week, so I'm a little bit behind. Uh, how did this match come about, and what do you think of it? Well, they had a... He was on the Miz and Morrison show, whatever, whatever Miz's show is. Yeah. And pretty much uh, Seamus used Miz and Morrison as the, I guess, his, like, lackeys or whatever to get mm. this going. And then they had a match afterward. But either way, I'm, I'm out on it. It's a no for me. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and pick uh, Jeff Hardy to win because he didn't win at the last pay per view. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. about it. Normally, when it comes to like a match like this, where it feels like it favors a specific competitor, is usually them that takes the L in the situation. Yep. Just look at Mick Foley; he always does like hardcore matches, and they would always lose them. So, you know, just just to be different, you know what? Just to be different, I can see this going fifty fifty. If this ends, to, the feud ends at Extreme Rules, and Jeff Hardy should get the win here. But if this is going to prolong the feud going forward, which I don't see why they'd stop it anytime soon, um, I'm going to go Sheamus. He's been in plenty of bar fights with Cesaro in the past, so I think he's got the experience. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it's, uh, Sheamus picks up the win here. Um, going from one stipulation match to the other, we have an eye for an eye match between Rey Mysterio and Seth Rollins. Uh, go ahead, man. It sounds like you got want to get something off your chest about this whole it stipulation. Just, you're not really going to rip someone's fucking eye out. Like, why even do this? Like... <laughs> Like, you're literally not going to do this. Like, I don't... Sometimes, like, I know what they're trying to do and they're trying to sensationalize shit and get you talking about it, but, I mean, using the world's greatest match ever and then an eye for an eye match where you literally have to take out the other person's eyes, two completely different right. fucking things. Mm-hmm. Uh, it seems I a little know ridiculous. Pick this. I, I know, it seems very ridiculous, uh, but what is wrestling if not ridiculous for the right. most part? Uh, I, you know what, man? The main thing here is that they've been building up this Rey Mysterio and Seth yeah. Rollins match. They've been teasing it for weeks on end. Rey Mysterio is not currently contracted with WWE. That's another maybe thing what too. maybe what they would do is they would have him lose to Seth Rollins while they work things out. If they don't work things out, then he's written off a storyline with this with this match. Right. And which is he, what I think is all boiled down to anyway. Yeah. So if he works out a contract before this or or whatever the case may be, then I I think it's gonna be Seth Rollins here. Yeah. Absolutely. However, I would love to see Seth Rollins with a fucking eye patch. When Kevin Owens busted that out on Monday, I yeah. I, I, I popped for that. I'm calling uh I'm calling Seth and I'm calling Dominic Turn. Join the disciples. Stop it. Stop it, man. You you ain't Where, you, you ain't Kyle need, been watching too much soap operas, too <laughs> much you. Mexican dramas. Nah. They, they're too many pauses and too many things where you're like, well, and you don't think about it because it's his son, but right. Nah, just, man. And, and any other type of heel turn, if he was a real wrestler, like, it hmm, makes like sense. is he going to? Yeah, it made sense, but I, I don't think so, man. I, I think if, uh, if Dominic does get involved, it's to help his dad out, but I am going to go ahead and say Seth Rollins pick, picks up the win here just because Rey Mysterio's uh, current WWE contract situation is up in the air. So Same. Seth Rollins for both of us, right? Yep. Okay, uh, moving on, we have the SmackDown Women's Championship match between Bayley, the longest reigning and most dominant SmackDown Women's Champion we've probably ever seen, taking on Nikki Cross. This is a matchup we haven't really seen. And for a while there, it d- did feel like Bayley had ran through just about everyone in the division. She went through Naomi, Tamina, Carmella, Lacey Evans like five times. She it just be And they're like prolonging the Sasha Banks match. I did not ex- oh and Alexa <coughs> Bliss too. I did not expect them to go with Nikki Cross. I like the change of pace. I think Nikki Cross is going to be an interesting matchup for her. I I don't want them to break up Sasha Banks and Bailey to be honest. And I don't think you drop the title like you Bailey doesn't drop the title unless it's to Sasha Banks. So unless she's Facts. defending against Sasha, she's not dropping it anytime soon. Nikki Cross, I love you. I you have great potential. You're an amazing worker, but Bailey's got my vote here. I'm sick of them. Uh, like we may not have got this one on one, but they face each other in the tag team every day, every week on SmackDown. Like mm-hmm. it's like the only the only match they have. Like it's it's they're kind of short I, on I'm, bodies too, though. So I can't yeah, even blame I know, them on this this time around. I mean, I understand, but still, I'm I'm over it. Like Nikki's not winning. I I just don't see that happening because they need Bailey and them. The Bailey and them are literally like revitalizing the tag team division and every women's division. So yeah. I don't see them losing the belts anytime soon. They've really leaned into both uh, Sasha Banks and Bailey once uh, Becky and Charlotte went out. And they're like, well, we're going to yeah. put the tight straps on them so they can go on all three brands. So Facts. just to have an excuse. Uh, speaking of the tag champs, let's uh, talk about Sasha Banks. She's going to be challenging Asuka for the Raw Women's Championship match. This is the match I'm geeked the fuck out for. Yeah, the, Like you saw what Sasha Banks and Io Shirai did. We covered yeah. that shit. That was a bomb ass match, and they they like planted seeds for this match with Oscar interfering, throwing in the yeah. green mist. 
I love Sasha. She's my girl. She's my favorite wrestler. It's not your time, girl. If you don't get the championship, it's going to be off of Bailey. Asuka just won that title. She's not losing that anytime soon. The soonest I can see her dropping that is at the Rumble. If that, Asuka got the win here. She's retaining. I, I see her losing it, but it, and I think she's going to get it right back either at the next pay-per-view or at the next Raw. Cause I, mm. And you brought me over to the dark side with Sasha. Like To me, the last month or two, She's been the MVP by far. I mean, as far as match-wise, her, her work on the mic, like, if WWE plays this right, they might be able to get a Becky run out of her with main, not just wrestling-wise, but mainstream shit as well if they play, oh, it, hell play yeah. it right. Hell fucking yeah. I know man. they're not going to. They're going to find some way to drop the fucking ball just because they just always seem to when it comes to people of color. Like, if they don't get themselves over or fix it, then WWE just has no idea what to do with drop them. Drop the ball. So I, which I I think that's what happened with Kofi too. They didn't know how to promote Kofi and how to make Kofi stay hot like he was. Which, but if they do this right, I I, I definitely feel like Sasha could come out being okay. the MV, entire MVP. Of so, what you're pitching here is you kind of see like a like a Sasha Banks Bailey two person power trip, two women yeah. power trip, similar to what Austin and. And Triple H had back in the day. Right. Okay, but so, we didn't get to see that flesh out because he got injured. But this exactly. time, we can see this play out where they okay. just control both shows, and there's nothing you can do because it's it's just them. And also, who doesn't? Me personally, I've been pushing this whole time, keep them together. I don't want to see them break up mm -mm. until we get a real crowd, or until something like and, unless it's like a glass and break glass in case of emergency thing. But I right. think they just keep them together as long as possible. For sure. And honestly, you've talked me into that's probably the better idea. I'd like to see that. I would prefer Sasha to get the title, not only because she's my favorite, but because also you get the two women power trip dynamic. Plus, you get Sasha chase, uh, not Sasha, Asuka chasing the title and actually yes. pin someone for the championship. She, yes, she won the title fair and square. However, she didn't pin Be uh, Becky Lynch to win it. So Facts. it would be nice to actually get that back. And it's okay if she, like, loses the title for like a month or two. They did that with Austin all the goddamn time. You know, yeah, it, that's it's, what I'm saying. Like, it's, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. So I would prefer your situation, but whenever WWE is posed with the question, do we do the most interesting route or the most obvious boring route? They usually go with the most obvious boring route. So Facts. I still think it's going to be Oscar retaining. Um, speaking of obvious and boring, we have Drew McIntyre versus Dolph Ziggler for the WWE Championship. And Dolph Ziggler is going to pick the stipulation. He has yet to announce what it's going to be. Watch it be like a last man standing match or something. Uh, I think this match is going to be fire, though. It's going to be good, but it's pretty obvious what's going to happen here, right? Yeah. I mean, there's a couple different scenarios that I could see coming out of it. But, I mean, either way, Drew's not losing. He's not. He's not. Uh, he might get his ass whooped. Uh, he might have a banger of a match with Dolph Ziggler because Dolph Ziggler, as we've been seeing, he has banger of a matches. But... Nah, man. Uh, Drew McIntyre, he's hot. He's perfect for that top champion role that yeah. Raw needs. And you, you, we'll talk about it in a second, but SmackDown's lacking that right now. And then, Sucks. so you don't change that dynamic. And come on, it's 2020. You're really going to put the world title on Dolph Ziggler in 2020? If you didn't do it in 2012, you're not going to do it now. Fuck that. Um, I'm looking forward to the match. I'll see what happens, but it does seem very predict predictable to me. Drew McIntyre gets the win here. Uh, next up, final match, unless they announce the last minute one. We are recording this the Tuesday before SmackDown, so if anything happens on SmackDown, oh well. Uh, we have Braun Strowman, the current Universal Champion, taking on Bray Wyatt in a Wyatt Swamp fight match. This is a non-title match. So, what I like about this match is it's a cinematic match. And it brings them back to their roots. It brings back the old Bray Wyatt, the the cult leader Bray Wyatt, either world's Bray Wyatt. I've been all for this feud. Me and uh, Jay really talked about it. I think the episode that me and Jay took over on SmackDown was the <laughs> episode where he busted out the old eater of worlds gimmick. So given the fact that it's non-title and it's in Bray Wyatt's home turf, I can totally see Bray Wyatt picking up the win here, given that he lost at uh, Money in the Bank to Braun Strowman and leading up to a rubber match against The Fiend for the actual title at SummerSlam or whenever they actually have their next big pay-per-view. Uh, yeah, I would say that. But again, like you said before, instead of them going with the uh, the logical route, they're somehow or another Braun's going to fucking win this match because uh, Bray Wyatt just only loses on pay-per-views. That's all he does pretty much. So 
I mean Bray Wyatt. Yeah, you true, true, because it's the old version of Bray Wyatt that were always lose yeah. all the goddamn <laughs> fucking time. <laughs> but you know, maybe, maybe there's something here. I, so. I'm I'm just not sold on Braun. Like I, I I get the appeal and I I understand all that, but this right here, you get to see the dichotomy of somebody that like Drew, who knows what he's doing in and out of the ring and on the mic, versus Braun, who is not quite there. Like sure. I, I think I know what they're trying to do and what. What they were expecting, but I mean, get the get the get this fucking belt off him and Please. put him back in the mid card. Let him jump around and dance, or whatever the hell his whack ass wants to do in that choo choo train bullshit. Like I can't stand him. I think he's terrible in the main event because they they missed their opportunity with him. I think the, yeah, I think his opportunity is gone. I don't think he's gonna be like a Bray Wyatt that can reinvent himself with a, like a Fiend no. gimmick, or even a Seth Rollins with this Messiah stuff, or even like a Drew McIntyre that can leave, reinvent himself, and just come back a bigger, badder version of himself. I think we've seen what Braun Strowman is. There, there's a cap to him. He's Big Show. He got to yeah. Big Show level faster than Big Show got there. And, right. Uh, unfortunately, that's where he is. I don't see him as a big time player. I don't see him as like a big time draw. I'm not interested in any of his matches. The only reason I'm interested in this match is because it's cinematic and it has some history with his past with Bray Fact. Wyatt. I has think nothing to do with him. Has nothing to do with him. It's all about Bray Wyatt <laughs> that's making me involved in this match. It, you swap out Braun Strowman and include Luke Harper or Eric Rowan, and I'd be just as hype almost. And that's my thing with with all of these with both these sides of the promotion. Like, yeah. this is the time where you can experiment with shit, and people's not gonna. Yeah. They're not gonna give you, they're not gonna give you shit about you trying some new things because there's no crowd and the ratings are down anyway. So especially with SmackDown, like you said before, them not having someone like Drew or somebody that they can rest on and go, mm -hmm. try it with somebody else. You have all types of people on there. Give it back to AJ. Give it to Daniel Bryan. There's all types of people better suited to carry your brand through this crazy ass time than Braun Strowman. I'm sorry, he's he's ass to me. He always has been. Like I don't like. I liked it better when he didn't say anything. He just wore that mask yeah. and never said a word. Like, yeah. That was the best yeah. version. Or or when he first of broke off, when he first broke off and was starting to do his stuff with Roman. I think that was the best Braun Strowman we've seen. Yeah. Okay. But uh, but yeah, guys, uh, that's our the horror show at Extreme Rules pay per view predictions. Uh, this has been the SmackDown podcast. We are the exclusive wrestling recap podcast for Wrestling News World. Check them out, guys. And uh, we'll see you guys this Sunday to cover Extreme Rules. Uh, I think RN might pop in there. I know Kyle's going to be hand handling that. Let us know what you guys think about our predictions in the comment section down below. Tweet us at SESVince, at Mr8984, and obviously to the show's Twitter, at SmackRawPod. And also, like I said, comment down below your own predictions. Let us know what you guys think. And are we right? Are we wrong? Are we a little bit off base? Are we a little bit too biased? We don't know. Uh, let us know what you guys think. We'll catch you guys uh, later on this week for Slammiversary predictions. And we'll, we will be covering Slammiversary this Saturday. So I'm excited for that. Uh, having yep. covered Impact Wrestling since uh, Bound for Glory. So this should be fun. But, uh, but yeah, that's uh, today's episode. We'll catch you guys later on, y'all. We'll catch you later. Have a good one, guys.